You is Dirty Sanchez, professional music producer and hip hop MC, and this is my studio. Got a homeschool woman. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about my boy, Bob Cardi, the real Bob Cardi, and all the music that we've made over the years, hanging out in the studio with Dirty. I met Bob Cardi a few years back. I had put out an ad on Craigslist for my studio and for shooting a video. I slick think he hit me up for both. We never actually got around to shooting a video for Bob, which is pretty fucked. But he did come through to the studio quite a few, quite a few times. He became a great family friend. You know, us being from two sides of the world, you know, culturally. I think made us have a great friendship bond and also made us have great music. We collaborated a lot. I got a few songs with Bob. Desi has a few songs with Bob. I don't know why he hit me up. He was the only one in, in Chattanooga that was taking me serious. Uh, so I'm glad that he reached out to me because he was serious. And he was probably the first musician, the first instrumentalist I had ever worked with ever. He just was just a ball of energy and knowledge. I think I learned so much from Bob, continuing to learn so much from Bob, even to this day. We both got pictures taken from the late, great Jaybird. Um, so that was a deep connect, and uh, that's a crazy story as well. So the first time I think Bob came by and recorded with me, we recorded Last Ride. And every time Bob came by, he would come with 15 different instruments, you know what I'm saying? Knowing how to play all of them, you know? Shit that I ain't never seen, never heard of. He always had new gadgets, he always had new gear. He always had something that was just, you know, we would trade. I mean, I got a lot of just equipment from Bob. Like I said, I've learned so much from Bob. He would come by with these instruments. And uh, I remember, you know, we were recording Last Ride. And he was like, hey, man, you know, are you, are you even having a good time? Are you enjoying yourself? I'm like, fuck yeah, Bob. Like, this shit's dope. Like, I, I, I never really get to experience shit like this. Like, this is hard. Like, yeah, I, I am having a good time. Like, are you? And I think the first few times we got together, we were both kind of, like, unsure. But, man, Bob has been to, you know, house parties of mine. Me and Bob shared a stage plenty of times. Every time I have a show, I bring Bob up. I've seen Bob on stage plenty of times. So yeah, he, he would bring in these instruments and we would just record. work a lot. The times that he had off, he would come holler at me and shit. We would just kick it. We'd just hang out. Uh. And he would just come by sometimes and we would just talk. And, uh, you know, I always just like just hearing him play. I just always had to make sure that, like, I was recording. <laughs> if you ever saw Sandy Wexler, Desi fucking makes fun of me all the time. She calls me Sandy Wexler because something great would happen. And I'm like, ah, I wasn't recording. Well, I'm going to the roadhouse. Out to the roadhouse. They got a few bungalows. With Bob, that was... The main fucking concern is like, oh shit, I gotta like just be required, I just gotta be ready. So when Bob came by, I always just made it a point to like set the fucking mic somewhere close near in front of Bob, um, have the session prepared, and when he starts pulling out instruments and just starts playing, you know, because the man's like a jukebox, he'll just play. Keep your eye on the road and your so when he just starts playing, I just gotta be prepared to boom, record. Going to the roadhouse. Woo! 
good times. Hey. So there'll be a lot of times where, you know, he has songs where like the beginning of it will be cut off and shit. You know what I mean? It'll be like the end of the song because I'll just like I, maybe I should be recording this. Um, there'll be times where he'd be playing, and I'm never sure if it's a um, cover or if it's an original Bob song. So you always just jump into song mood and I can never catch you. Yeah. So I caught you this time. So I'm just like, yo, what, what, is, what is this? What's that? Like, where did this come from? Like, this, this is just dope. You're like, ah, oh, you know, it's Tom Waits. And, uh, like, he's, he's taught me so many different people. I feel like every time I would see Bob, he would leave me with something big that I would probably stew on for like months. And then like later, it, I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. It makes sense now. Like, okay, and then, you know. Shit, I'm, like I said, I'm consistently learning from Bob, bro. We did want to do a project together, uh, but we never like set time aside to be like, yo, let's just work on this project or work on this song or work on, you know, it was never like that. It was always just like creativity. Bob will come in here and just feel the creative energy and we would just start getting creative and shit. And it was just like, sometimes it's hard to control. Creativity, and I would just have hours worth of Bob playing, you know, on a session. Like it wouldn't even be broken up on separate sessions. Like I'll just let them play. And I'd go back, and you know, I'd have to listen to it later. Sometimes I feel like I'm probably still going through some of it. I feel like I haven't released nearly as many of the Bob songs that we've recorded onto my Gravity Productions page. There's probably plenty more that I'm going to, re uh, to release and probably plenty more that I'm going to remix. I think the only one I've ever remixed and put some hip hop drums on there through some bass and shit was Holy Row. Cause that song was just fucking incredible. But I plan on doing that more. Recording Bob was a learning experience and it taught me so much in the recording process of making music. You know, I'm used to recording to a click track and a tempo. And a lot of times when Bob would just play, you know, there was no click track. He was just playing and there was no tempo except for the rhythm that he created for himself. So I had to learn to create a tempo or a click track to the rhythm that he played to keep things in sync and uh man that was a whole that's a, that was just that's a whole nother thing yeah man that was challenging for a bit i think i mastered that shit i learned that shit through bob the years of you know just recording with bob also some of the troubles i had with recording with bob was i'm used to recording in fours beats of fours one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You know what I'm saying? Fours, eights, sixteens. Sixteens a verse and shit like that. Eights usually the hook. And you know what I mean? That's usually how things are structured and in, in, in hip hop. Bob coming from folk, many other genres, of assuming rock, rock as well. There are some things that he would play in threes. He's do the metronome in threes. That shit, that shit blows my mind. So yeah, I don't know how to make music in threes. That's something different. I get the concept, but I just don't know how to set it up. I don't think I can make a song in threes. So man, Bob, he's always been a blessing. He's a great family friend. I'm glad I met him. I'm glad that we've made music together. We've, I, I didn't even go through the songs we've made together. album but it's not my first album I've been making so much goddamn music but this is what I call my first professional I, I got a CD for it and everything uh, I got like a booklet in it I pressed up a hundred copies of them if you have one of the hundred copies of alternate realities and you're a real one you're an OG um, but Bob Cardi uh, made the best song on that album I'm, I think he has more than one song on that album but he got the best song on that album growing old Classic. I think that might be that might be the best song that I've ever recorded ever, music-wise, just structure-wise, just 
pure music. Like, it's technically sampled, but it's sampled from Bob Cardi, which I recorded at my studio. So it wasn't like I sampled a record that was, you know, recorded and whatever, whatever. And like, nah, I recorded this song from Bob. A lot of people tell me it's probably yeah. the most commercialist song on the album, the most playable for radio. Fuck your feelings. <laughs> Name like fuck your feelings. Uh, fuck your feelings. You know, great song on the album. Growing old, even better song on the album. With those two right there, I was just like, golly, I could have just retired. But a new album, Lyrical Outlaw, opens up with Bob Cardi with Illuminati Blues. And, you know, Bob recorded that blue shit for me a long time ago, man. And I just probably sat on it and I loved it. And I wanted to do something with it. I wanted somebody else to do something with it. Yeah, I sampled it. I flipped it. You know what I mean? I let him play in the beginning. And then, I, you know, I flipped that second part and I let him play at the end. My most played song on Spotify is with Bob Cardi. And it's the last song on my album, Lyrical Outlaw. And that's called Boogie. And, I mean, shit, I just straight jocked. Bob Cardi song, bro. I mean, Bob Cardi played, and I'm like, you can hear it at the end of the recording. Matter of fact, when he stopped record, when 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 he stopped playing, I'm still recording. I said, man, I'm gonna kill that shit. Like, and I meant it. So that's a great song. If you haven't heard it, listen to it. It's the most played song on my Spotify. We did OC Blues, and that was a song that I had heard him perform live at Ziggy's. Uh, when we did Ziggy's together. Man, me and my boy, we thought that song was so fucking hard. And then one day he came by the house and he was, and he just started playing it. And I was like, oh, I gotta record that shit. I gotta record it. So I hit the record button, caught that song, and I don't think I ever told Bob that I was gonna sample anything that he did. I think I just sampled it and then I sent it to him, hoping that he was cool with it. And then he hit me back and he'd be like, oh my god, brother, it's beautiful. So I'm like, fuck yeah. So yeah, OC Blues was a real song to me just because, you know, it had real personal meaning behind it for my young life um, so flip that put that on the album that's another great song I'm telling you all my best songs are with Bob Carter literally every single one Desi got a track called young beautiful ass plucks from Bob Cardi the real Bob Cardi uh, the man can play guitar like a god uh, he can rap too, he goes to 11. If you haven't heard that song, bars. Bob Cardi is the OG. If you don't know the real Bob Cardi, you fucking up. They got all types of music together. There's so much more music from Bob Cardi to be coming out. I can't wait for Bob Cardi to come visit me out here in Myrtle so we can start recording some more shit. Check out some of the songs that I've already released on my Gravity Production page with Bob Cardi on it. Probably the dopest folk you artist understand. you've ever heard of, the dopest folk artist I've ever worked with. He's probably the only folk artist I've ever I worked go with. To 11. Uh, Hillbilly ass Bob Cardi boy. Look him yeah, up, buddy. That's my ride. Ain't it cool? Got crossover speakers in my pickup truck. I speak my mind. I press my luck. Yo, and that's episode three, BH. Ah!